All right, Polyrath, use Double Slap. Hey, what are you doing? Double means two, not several. Stop it. What's going on? Chancy! What is going on guys? This is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon video. And in this video, I'm gonna go over 51 times Pokemon lied to you. And as always, I have three Master Balls in this video. And no, these three don't count, so don't even comment that. And yeah, with that said, let's get right into <clears> um, <throat> Uh, yeah, mini me? I just wanna say that I'm still hashtag Team Sakura Co, and I just got my new box in the mail. Oh, oh my god, this again? It's clear that Tokyo Tree is the best, just look at this cool Halloween themed box that I got in the mail. Yeah, but does it have culture? Oh, oh wait, the viewers probably have no idea what we're arguing about. Oh yeah, uh, all right, we're gonna let y'all decide. Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co are sponsoring this video, and we're arguing over which one is the best. Yeah, they're both Japanese Snapbox subscriptions, and I personally have subscribed to Sakura Co using whose credit card? Shut up. See, with Sakura Co, they're all about culture, giving you the most traditional and artist snacks from all around Japan. And this time around, they're collaborating with the Ibaraki government to bring us a rich agricultural taste of Ibaraki, a city in the center of Japan. Yeah, I guess that's pretty cool. And it looks like they have a variety of crunchy and fruity snacks along with some Ibarashi Senchai tea. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's what makes them better, the tea. And also the nice tableware they give you. And my favorite snacks they have are definitely the chestnut, karinto, and Ibaraki blueberry manju. You are butchering those names so badly. But okay, that's enough of Sakura Co. I'm going to tell you all why Tokyo Tree is the best. You see, Tokyo Tree is filled with exclusive and limited time pop culture snacks from Japan. And just from opening the box alone, you can see all the fun Halloween themed snacks that we got here. Like the limited edition sweet potato Kit Kats, or even the Halloween pizza core snacks, or the infamous Tokyo Lair Loaf. Wait, why are they infamous? Because once you have one bite of them, you will never find a taste of your bread delicacy again. Whoa. Yeah, but if you're allergic to soy, then you can't have them, as you can see from the ingredients booklet here. And on top of all of that, the best thing of all, Tokyo Tree is doing a special Halloween giveaway for a free box. You can enter down below in the description. But yeah, what do y'all think? Are y'all Team Sakura Co or Team Tokyo Tree? Yeah, let us know by clicking the links down below to get your own box today. And use our code DOBS to get $5 off your first order. Yeah, do it. And big shout out to Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co for sponsoring this video. And yeah, with that said, let's get started with the video. Alright, let's start with Ivysaur. Ivysaur's Pokedex history states that when the bulb in the back grows large, it appears to lose the ability to stand on his hind legs. But if you look at Ivysaur's sprite, it's literally standing on his hind legs. This is just an epic fail. The champ guy in Giovanni's gym claims that he doesn't know the gym leader's identity, but he's standing right next to the sign that literally says Giovanni's name. I trusted you, champ guy. The fact that a Snorlax could have the characteristic of lacking to run. Psh, yeah, right. He's even holding a leftovers. You can't fool me. In the Red and Blue manual, it states that in each game, there's a Pokemon that appears only once. If you do not capture it the first time, you will never have the chance to capture it again. And then it shows a picture of Zubat, which is a Pokemon that is notorious for appearing several times. That's gotta be the biggest lie I've ever seen in Pokemon. Wait, no, this is the biggest lie. This strategy guy states that if you miss out on catching Zapdos, Articuno, or Moltres, you can restart your game and keep all of your current Pokemon, which is just not true at all. What if I told you we've been lied to about the real identities of certain Pokemon, like Weezing, or Nidoking, or Zapdos, or Golbat? Or what about Vaporeon, Jolteon, or Flareon? Or even Kingja, Golem, Mewtwo, and Weedle? And lastly, Paris. In the anime episode Pillars of Friendship, Hunter J turns the Regis and Brandon into petrified stone. Or at least, that's what they want you to believe, because if they were really petrified, then how come Brandon and Regirock appear in different positions? You see, this is just further proof that these are paid actors, and the anime is all a lie. In the very second episode of the anime, Misty says this very confidently. You know as well as I do that a water Pokemon can't battle on land. I was just warming up. Wait, really? This is a thing? Then why 25 episodes later we see Misty battling with her Staryu on land? So that was a lie. The pseudo Wudo in Hao's house says lies when he talked to it. So at least it's being forefront about it. And fun fact, pseudo Wudo's Japanese name is Usaki, which translates to the words false tree and liar respectively. In Pokemon Coliseum, after defeating a scientist named Koten, you will turn on an alarm and say, Wahahaha, now you're stuck. There's no escape in the lab for you. But that's not true. You can literally leave the lab at any time. 
In Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, it describes Submission as the strongest fighting type move, which is completely wrong on both accounts. Because in Generation 1, High Jump Kick was the strongest. And then in Generation 2, Dynamic Punch and Cross Chop became the new strongest. So what gives Pokemon Stadium? At a certain point in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Lyra will call you and tell you that her Meryl evolved. Though, the next time you see her, her Meryl is still a Meryl. So she just straight up lied to you. Might as well call her Lyra Ray. In Pokemon Go, if you try to name yourself available, it will say that name isn't available. But that's a lie because clearly that does say available. How can they lie to us like that so ruthlessly? There are multiple dex entries that state that Zangus and Viper are arch rivals and their hatred are embedded in their DNA. But this is a straight up lie because for one, they're in the same egg group, which means they can breed. And for two, while they're in the daycare, the caregivers will say that they're getting along and that they seem peaceful enough towards each other. So they're just lying, they're actually best friends. In Gold and Silver, the bike salesman will say, My bicycles are first rate, you can ride them anywhere. But that's false advertising because we can't ride our bikes indoors. I think Professor Rogue would like to have a word with you. The fact that it says the Battle Frontier project has started in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and that was six years ago. This has to be the biggest lie in any Pokemon game ever. In X and Y, when you wake up to Snorlax, it will say that Snorlax has opened his eyes wide. But I can clearly see that his eyes are closed. So why are you lying to my face like that? The construction worker in Lumio City states that there's a power outage and that you can't enter. But if you talk to him at night, you can clearly see the lights from the buildings. What are you hiding, sir? Ponyta's fire rate Ponyta Sentry states that his hooves are 10 times harder than diamonds. So that means they are very high on the Moe scale. And yet, Ponyta using stop on a Geodude wouldn't be very effective. Who's lying here? Or should I say, who's lying here? <laughs> there was an e-reader game called Diving Corsola that you can unlock from certain TCG cards. Though the entire game is a lie because Corsola can't learn the move Dive. So these are just paid actors yet again. In the anime episode Beauty and the Breeder, this announcer breaks the fourth wall and says this. Which Pokemon will be named Beauty of the Year? You'll only find out if you stay right where you are. But if you watch till the end of the episode, the results are never shown, and we get this instead. Will the team walk away with top honors? Maybe, maybe not. Win or lose, Brock will always be top breeder in our book. So this dude just straight up clickbaited us. In the first chapter of Pokemon Masters, Rosa says that apparently it's against the rules to force a trainer to battle if they don't want to. Wait, what? So you're telling me that every trainer that ever fought me ever lied to me? I'm not sure who to believe now. As we all know, there's a famous scene in the anime where a perfectly round silhouette is supposed to be a Jigglypuff scene from above. But thanks to the Pokedex and Sun and Moon, we can now see that was a straight up lie. See, look, I'm gonna overlap them. There's just no way. In the DVD commentary for the third Pokemon movie, one of the writers state that Entei can talk because it's a fire psychic type. It was great that Entei was psychic, so, uh, any thought he had, we could, I mean, we could put any thoughts in his mind that we wanted. Well, that's not true. Entei is only a fire type. I literally paid money to get lied to. How dare they? And the Prima official strategy guide for Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, it states that Electric Pokemon would easily beat Giovanni's Nido Queen. Uh, yeah, good luck with that. The fact that we're supposed to believe that Zubat is carrying a Squirtle in the intro of the anime, that's gotta be some green screen trickery or that Squirtle super glued to Zubat's belly. Because look at Zubat, there's no way that he could carry Squirtle this way. In the anime episode Love Pokemon Style, Macy tells Ash that her Macargo evolved from Slugma during their battle. But if we look at said battle, we never see Slugma evolving. And furthermore, Slugma never knocked out a single Pokemon during this battle, and even got knocked out itself. So why would Macy lie about that? What is she hiding? In Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, there's a series of items that are straight up lies. Like the Oran Berry, pretending to be the Oran Berry. Or the Mixed Elixir, pretending to be the Max Elixir. Or even the Reviser Seed, pretending to be the Reviver Seed. Imagine getting the Reviser Seed and your friend literally dies because you've been fooled. Why not? Pokedex entry states that it's always smiling, and that you need to see his tail to determine his other emotions like anger. However, why not is he not smiling at several points in the anime? Like here, and here, and even here. So that dex entry's a lie. After opening up the ancient tome on Route 120, this hiker blatantly lies to you and says that he sees no entrance. He must be either a pathological liar or just blind. In X and Y, Lissandra states that if we choose the cried button, he won't fire the ultimate weapon. Well, that's a lie because when we do choose the cried button, Zorosic says psych and fires it anyways. They do be villainous though. This promo trainer card, Dance Neo Umakuni, claims to have 2000 HP. But that's a straight up lie, and the card is even self aware because the Japanese text below it translates to lie. Which, I'm not gonna lie, is pretty funny. Youngster Joey's a liar because his Rattata is indeed not top percent. It's actually the worst Rattata that you could possibly get if you look at his data. It has zero IVs across the board. No wonder I destroy that Rattata every time. 
When you buy a set of Chillin' Berries at the Joint Avenue, the description will read, A set of four Chillin' Berries. They weaken a super effective normal type attack against a holding Pokemon. Wait, a super effective normal type attack? Really? What a scam. In the anime, it is commonly stated that a trainer must be at least 10 years old to own a Pokemon. Yet, in Pokemon Journeys, there's a friendship festival in which kids under 10 years old bring their Pokemon to compete in. So basically, parents are just lying to their kids. The Pokemon Yen Mega has several Dex trees that state that it could transport an adult by flight. And it even goes as far to say that it could do it easily. Yet, it can't even learn the move Fly. So they lied to us, and they made us look stupid. This Pokemon card is a straight up lie because it's actually a ditto. You just have to peel it to see. Mr. Backlaw from Diamond and Pearl is described as a compulsive liar on Bulbapedia. He will repeatedly insist that a Pokemon appears in his garden when, in reality, the Pokemon can't be found in the entire region. Liar! In the anime episode, Why, Why Not, Ash talks about his badges and says that he won the plane badge from Whitney in the Goldenrod City Gym. Just listen. My plane badge came from Whitney in the Goldenrod Gym. However, he actually won the badge at her uncle's milk take farm. I guess saying I won this plane badge at a cow farm just doesn't sound nearly as impressive. This guy on Route 116 is a straight up liar because he verbatim says that he dropped his glasses. But dude, I can see them on your face. The Mega Evolution Guru in X and Y states that this intriguing stone is just an ordinary rock. But in Omega Ruby and Ava Sapphire, Mr. Stone reveals that it's actually a Pidgeotite. So this dude literally lied to us and then even has the audacity to say to our face that lying is bad. Just look here. In the first Pokemon movie, there is a trainer named Fergus who declared that all of his Pokemon are water types. But you can clearly see that he has a Nidoqueen, Queen, which may be blue, but is not a water type. You can't fool me, Fergus. In Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, Whaler's Dexter states that it's the biggest of all Pokemon. But this is not true since the game before, Eternatus was introduced, whose size is even greater than Whale Lord's. So what's going on, Game Freak? Is Whaler the biggest or not? In the anime episode, A Tyroke Full of Trouble, Ash's Pokedex states that Tyroke is the final evolution form of him on Lee and him on Chan. Just listen. Tyroke, the scuffle Pokemon. Tyroke is the evolved form of Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Chan. Ash, maybe it's time to get a new Pokedex because it do be lying though. In the anime episode, Primate Goes Bananas, Ash's Pokedex states that when a Mickey starts using Thrash, it's impossible to stop it. Hmm. All right, Blue, it's time for me to face you with my unstoppable thrashing Mankey. Are you ready? Because I'm going to become the champion. My Pokedex told me I would. Let's do this. All right, Blue, it's time. I have my Mankeys and you have no Mankeys, which means I win because I'm unstoppable. Okay, Mankey, do your thing. Use Thrash Attack. Yeah, okay. That's a little bit, that's a little damage, you know, but uh, I think we got this. Totally can win this. Wait. Wait a minute. What the f- In Boar's Black, Pokedex that states that he can throw a fire punch by setting his fist on fire with his fiery chin. It cares deeply about his friends. Yet, in Black and White, Inboard cannot learn fire punch. It also doesn't care about me at all. And we're friends. In Generation 1, the game will literally lie to you and say that a neutral damaging move is not very effective when attacking a dual type Pokemon. Like using a grass type move on a Gyarados. How dare they? In the anime episode, A Bite to Remember, Ash criticizes Max for making Putriana evolve by faking a battle. But if he really thought this was wrong, then why did Ash do the very same thing in the first season, and then again in the following season? Ash, you like hypocrite. In the Pokemon Adventures manga, Yellow expresses her concern stating that Red's Pikachu is weak to water types. But wait a minute, isn't it the opposite? Aren't water types weak to electric types? What gives Yellow? The fact that Game Freak wants you to believe that this is the trainer's belt buckle. It's not. It's actually his pain. And finally, the biggest lie in Pokemon is the new Pokemon Wiglet. That's not Wiglet. That's the Alaskan Bullworm. And there you go. 51 times Pokemon lied to you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed this video, how about you check out the 51 Ridiculous Moves video where Charmander can learn Wing Attack. Yes, I'm not even kidding. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.